uh, I just want to you know read the safe harbor statement once before we start with this presentation. So uh, guys, both the speaker and host, we are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only. We are not representing our employers or our companies here. This presentation is strictly for learning purpose only. We don't hold any responsibility if the same solution does not work for your business requirement. Last but not the least, this presentation is not meant for any promotional activities. It is strictly learning purpose only. So right. next slide, please, Chetan. So guys, we are very lucky that we have Chetan here, who is a MuleSoft expert, and he is doing great for this uh, wonderful MuleSoft community. Thank you so much for accepting my proposal, Chetan, and you know, blessing New York City with your presence. And uh, I will hand over this presentation to you, Chetan. Please take it forward. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. Thanks, Nidhi. Thanks for such a nice introduction and for the invite. So as you can see about me, I'm currently working as a lead um, engineer in Epicero and I'm associated with uh, MuleSoft community from past two years and also representing uh, um, in the region as a MuleSoft meetup leader. Recently, I joined the community as a meetup leader and I did certifications and have certification at architect level also. So that's what a uh, brief intro about me. Don't get confused with this uh, photo or picture you see here with the guy you can see in video. <laughs> video. So <laughs> that's a little yes. note I want to make. So let's move ahead with our session for today, which is uh, batch processing. Uh, know about or encountered or uh, might be implemented in uh, your projects about batch processing. So specifically as a part of this session, we'll be co covering batch processing for Mule. So when we say uh, batch processing, the first question arises in our mind is what exactly a batch processing or batch process is. So here are some definitions which you can find over the net. Uh, it says a job uh, which is responsible for loading or synchronizing huge amount of data from one system to another. It, re it requires minimal user or no user interaction at all. Okay, so when we say batch processing it's more about high volume of data um, when when someone says uh, we want to load high volume of data from one system to another so uh, what comes into our mind is etl or like extraction transformation and load or elt systems so here to implement the same scenario we can use batch jobs which are provided uh, by mule So the third point says, as we already discussed, uh, like it doesn't require any uh, or minimal user interaction because uh, let's say I am loading some transaction daily on daily basis. So I can be using a scheduler or some uh, third party sy uh, system, which is responsible for hitting a particular endpoint, which will eventually uh, synchronize the data between two dis different systems. So this is what uh, all different definition uh, came up uh, when we uh, talk about batch processing. So the next question arises is why and when batch processing? It's, um, it's not always like uh, uh, we need to fetch data, data or synchronize a small amount of data, we should go with batch processing. Uh, batch is more about dealing with high volumes of data because it also provides reliability. Uh, moving forward, we will see how it is uh, more reliable in case of uh, Mule and how MuleSoft provides uh, provide us uh, reliability in case of batch processing. So as we mentioned here, you can see as a part of this diagram, uh, we are synchronizing the data from different system. The systems can be Salesforce uh, or some uh, your intra level or some legacy systems also. So Mule provided us uh, three batch components in the palette if you have as a part of core module. If you want to implement batch processing, Mule provided us three components, uh, which are named as uh, batch job uh, steps and aggregator. So batch job is nothing, just is just a scope of 
whole batch and in each job we can have multiple batch steps and batch steps can have uh, aggregator also so aggregator here is optional but our batch job should have at least one step in order to uh, we, we in order to you need to we need to use it or utilize it so this is how a batch job looks like we let's say i have a event source like a http listener or i have i do have some processors where i am doing uh, let's say fetching the data from a third party system let's say a salesforce system and giving that whole data to the batch job so it can synchronize it to some uh, database okay so uh, here as i mentioned uh, as a part of batch job we can have batch steps and we can have multiple batch steps so batch steps also do have um, different uh, segregated section which we'll see moving forward so you can see here this is a batch job let's say in my core component if i go here as a part of uh, batch connectors i have these three components i have a batch job aggregator and a step so when I just drag and drop a batch job, it gives me a package of a step also. So as you can see, batch job has a processing phase and an on complete phase. We will discuss about it as a part of what are the different phases we have as a, of batch job. And we, when we talk about batch steps, we do have uh, two sections here, the processor sections and aggregator section. So processor section is nothing but uh, you can put different processors here. You can also put a, uh, in the aggregator section also, but you need to utilize a uh, aggregator in this section, then you can put your other processor. So as the name says, aggregator, like uh, I don't want to process record by record, so I can go with a cum cumulative processing of a bunch of records, so then I go with aggregator in that case. So batch processing in Mule 4 have three phases. The first phase, phase is uh, load and dispatch, process and on complete. When we say load and dispatch is nothing but uh, batch, uh, will, what it will do, Mule, it, it, what the instance will do, it will create a job instance ID, an instance will be created and a persistence queue, persistent queues will be created. So when I said batch job is reliable, the reason behind it is the persistent queues. So mule uh, maintains the queues in the file storage if we are running it in local and when we move it to the cloud uh, it on sqs so that those queues are being stored and um, even if some system crash crash occurs it never get vanished so um, uh, if we, uh, let's say I am running a system and there's some error occurred and my batch processing uh, was left incomplete. So next time when my systems comes up, the mule will read those queues and see what's the status where it left the batch processing and it will start from the same, same uh, position. So here the persistent queues helps in uh, providing the reliability to the batch jobs or the whole overall whole batch processing what uh, happens implicitly as a part of this load and dispatch is let's say i am giving thousands of data to this batch job uh, it will based upon our parameters we have given to our batch job it will create queues and segregate the data based upon the batch size which we give uh, until this process everything is in uh, single thread okay but as soon as we reaches the processing phase so whatever configuration we have given as a part of uh, parallel uh, configuration or what we say in this case is uh, concurrency it will create the threads one more thing before moving ahead as a part of load and dispatch internally it creates a variable called uh, bad job instance id 
and whatever queues it will create uh, it will look like something it will have a prefix uh, which says bsq and at the end you can see the instance id of that bad job so neeraj do we have any questions as of now yeah chetan thank you so much oh, okay okay great so as a part of our second stage which is uh, the process phase here all of our batch step lies the execution of the batch step occurs so when it say when i say asynchronous so for sure based upon the concurrency it will create multiple threads and all those threads will run concurrently and uh, uh, we get parallel processing as an output of that concurrency and one more thing uh, which we can make a note of here uh, we we might see uh, some extra queues might be created based upon if we are using any aggregators so when we move when we move to the uh, demo part we will see how these queues look like uh, and where it got created in our local system uh, sorry to interrupt you chetan we have two questions so sure. Question number one is from Kalyani, and uh, she is asking: BSQ means batch step queue, right? E yes. Okay. BSQ is batch step queue. Uh, I need to check. Um, for sure, Q, uh, Q is for uh, queue. I'm not sure on the S part what it is, but. Uh, because when we say batch step it is um, related to one queue but we can check on it why the name that be might be you can enlighten me if it is a batch step queue okay so we will get back to you on that kalyani prasad is asking <coughs> one question uh, streaming strategy at aggregator please explain in nutshell yeah we we will go moving forward when we move to our demo we will see each and every component how it looks like what are the properties how it affects overall uh, execution of the batch so for sure we will go uh, we will cover that part as a part okay. of our demo and uh, ravi is asking one question how many mm -hmm. bsq will be created uh it depends as of now i can see 3 Uh, initially when i but uh, based on aggregator if we are using it can increase so okay. mm. uh shrikan thank you so much for the information bsq he is saying batch sequential queue thank you for that information shrikan uh kodi is asking one question while processing the records in batch for some reason if i need to stop the batch process it is there any way yeah um if you are running it in local or any system you can just uh, stop it and clear up the queues before restarting it uh, you cannot interrupt it in between okay so kodi are you asking about uh, programmatically you want to stop it or you want to stop it like while running the batch you want to kill it so if you can uh, you know elaborate your question that will be helpful uh, prasad is saying you need those batch id for it for every queue one unique id got generated that's what he is saying kalyani is asking one question what is the size of a single bsq a uh, single bsq the file you are asking or uh, i didn't can you please elaborate a little bit more kalyani if you can elaborate your question more the queue totally depends on how many records we have um and um, it totally depends on how many records you have yeah we will see moving forward uh so, like how so we'll that file that looks demo. okay do we have any other questions or we can proceed yeah i think we can proceed uh, with the presentation no one more question from shrikant uh, possibility of implementing throttling for batch process like delay or on error continue uh 
Yes. So when you say throttling, you want to avoid the bottleneck condition, um, right? So in that case, uh, we should um, control the batch size, not a batch size, the mag maximum concurrency, the parallelism which we are uh, giving as a part of the property. We should uh, restrict that if you have any constraints of a V course as a part of your single instance. Okay, uh, we can proceed, Chetan. Cody is asking one question, how to check these queues? I think you will cover that in demo, right? We'll cover it for sure. It's not in okay. human readable okay. format, like it's just some binary information which is intended for mule instance, not for us. But we for sure we can see how it looks like. Sure. Yeah, we can proceed. Okay. okay. Great. Okay, so here is a diagram which depicts about how batch process uh, the process phase work of the batch processing. Let's say I have three steps here, and it can have multiple processors in that step. So what it does, it pulls out every record from the queue. So flow goes. Let's say I have a record one in my queue. It will go from record uh, step one, then step two and three. So this is how the records will record by record it will be processed so no other one record is dependent on other for the processing so in deep we will see how the queues when we say the when you see this direction the records are moving from from queue to the bed step and some processing is done and again it is feeding it to the queue with the updated information like uh, what's the current state uh, is it a failure or success and uh, if any changes occurred it will put that record back to the queue so and, and it will say hey yeah it's ready for the bed step two if it is a success and based upon whatever we have written in bed step the accept policies or expressions um, it will move forward to next steps so our last phase uh, once everything is done at this uh, processing level all the bed steps are covered uh, the record uh, we get a, a final statistics which says how many on total records were created how many are failure success any exceptions occurred uh, and if you want to dig about at the steps level like if you let's say you have five steps and you want to dig about at the steps level so you can also access it um, when you are programming you can just um, see some uh, step by results also we can see moving forward as a part of demo Okay, so time has come. So most of our questions will be answered here when we move towards demo. So just one second, uh, Chetan. Mm -hmm. Is there any sure. question uh, which is uh, anyone wants to ask before the demo? If one record is taking, yeah, Kavita is asking one question, uh, Chetan. Mm -hmm. If one mm -hmm. record is taking more time in one batch step, will it process all the other records to the next step? yes for sure as i said no other one record is dependent on the other so it right? will be a parallel so, processing yes and if we can't any control over multi-threading like at a time maximum number of threads to be active to avoid out of memory issues uh, Chetan. Yeah, I guess this is the similar question which you have answered, Sikant. You were asking like the, the throttle condition or bottleneck condition. This, it's similar. So we can uh, for sure control its number of threads uh, or number of batches we want to execute. So there is a parameter called max concurrency as a, uh, as a, we feed it as a whole batch job parameter. So we can control it and say, hey, I just want to use two threads for the processing of this uh, batch. So it will only use two. And uh, Sunena is asking one question. What will happen if one record fails? Yeah, so for that, we have one more parameter which says uh, what to do if a record fails. So if I say, if I set with property to one, so as soon as one record fails, it will term, uh, 
it will like it's um, what we can say if i say it's zero uh, then as soon as the first record fails it will terminate the whole job and if i set to minus one so it will take over any number of error records it will not uh, stop uh, until all the records are processed irrelevant of any one of those records are errored out or not so we can set that if i say uh, if i give 10 a value of 10 to that property so at the like let's say i got first area second till 10 it will neglect all those and as soon as it get 11th it will term terminate the whole bed job and to make it infinity you can use minus one thanks for that Chetan. uh one uh, follow-up question from shrikant any reprocessing strategies are provided out of the box mule stock for failure for any of the failed records like can you reprocess them can you implement some reprocessing strategy yeah for sure you can do it let's say um, that totally depends on how we play with all these uh, properties of batch steps batch job aggregator and all so moving forward we will discuss all these properties and based upon your use case you can um, utilize these batch step to let's say i have used a batch step one where out of 150 got failed and in batch step two i will say i just give me all those records which got failed in the batch step one and i will retry it okay or you uh, if you don't want to retry it you want to sum it up and send it to your client let's say there's some error in this 50 records just look over it and uh, get back to us and when we say retry you can always use reconnection strategies or um, retry scope if you are you try scope for that particular processor where you think it get failed due to some connection issues or the end system issues but if it is a data issue you should uh, accumulate uh, all those records and give a bit back to the um, stakeholders who are more concerned about if there is any error in those records good to know that thank you so much for that Chetan. any other questions from anyone before we move to the demo part I think we are good. Yes, we're good. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. So as a part of first scenario, I have two. I have uh, picked up two scenarios to cover all of the stuff here. So before moving to the running of our execution of this, we will discuss about each parameters here. So as a part of whole batch job, I can see all these parameters are here, which is uh, name is nothing but what name you wanna give. To the scope and the second uh, which we were discussing there was a question i guess sunena asked like what if was a record fields so here the limit is zero so as soon as i got a single failure the whole batch job will be terminated but if i say it minus one so it will tolerate as many as records uh, it will fail it will not uh, terminate the whole batch job until it process all of them okay so the third parameter is our scheduling strategies. Um, so it's more like, uh, like how you want to process records by records. So here we got only two of them, which is ordered sequential and round robin. So ordered sequential is nothing but follows the um, created um, date time of that record and based on that priority it will process the records and round robin scheduling if you heard about is more about uh, quantum hold on you can see my notepad uh, hold on. Okay. yeah now we can see your notepad okay so when i say round robin so if we if you remember in our operating systems we have this strategy also which says let's say i have three processes running and uh, the quantum i set for is let's say two seconds so each process will get two seconds one by one so first this get two seconds so it will it, it doesn't matter it got completed or not uh, it will get first two seconds then the second will get two seconds and so on so as soon as third is done again the p1 will get another two seconds so this is uh, how Chetan, round robin works Chetan, could, Chetan, uh, yeah. could you please zoom in your screen or your text uh, notepad sorry 
Oh, yeah, could so you please zoom in the text? Yeah, because it okay. was small actually. Yeah, now I think it should be good. Okay. Thank you, thank you for the call out, Mona. Sorry for that. Thanks for that. Also, so as I said, let me repeat it for you. Um, so let's have three processes. We are discussing it from um, process point of view, let's say. So it same happens with here, uh, the records. So in round robin, there is a quantum, which is nothing but the time interval given to each process, let's say. So first process will get two seconds and irrelevant of it is it uh, is finished or not. Uh, it will be put into the wait state and the second process will get another two seconds and so on. So this is how the processing works when we to go for a round robin. Okay, so back to our the parameters. The fourth parameter here is job instance ID. So for, uh, for by default, it will pick it. If you don't assign anything, it will pick up a random correlation ID or UUID and it will assign it uh, as a job instance ID. And if you want any job instance ID, sometimes we have some um, requirements like in request, you are getting some event ID, which you want to associate to your um, job, uh, bad job also. So you can always do that. Uh, depends on your use case. And uh, next parameter here is these two parameters are very crucial uh, when we want to achieve the performance uh, of our batch processing. So first here is the nothing but a batch block size and max concurrency. So batch block size is nothing but how many groups of like how many records should be there in each group. If, you, uh, if I provide let's say 100 records and I am giving a batch block size of 25 so each group will have 25 so out of this i will be getting four groups which will have 25 records in each okay so let's say i have one 200 and the block size is 25 i will get four block uh four blocks which is 25 26 to 50, 51, 275, and 76, 200, okay? So if I'm inbounding 100 records and I'm giving block size of 25, so each block will have 25 records. So here, uh, so I will get four blocks, each of, uh, consisting, each of them consisting 25 records. So next parameter here is nothing but a max concurrency, which is uh, nothing of, uh, nothing but helps in achieving parallelism. So when we say parallelism, so it's related to the uh, Srikanth was asking, I guess. So if I say I want to just utilize three threads, I just uh, I don't go with the default. So default is how many cores your system have into two. So let's say I have six cores into two. So by default, it will use 12 threads. But if I want to restrict due to my uh, system requirements, I can always tweak it for better performance. Uh, and I don't want to violate my uh, space complexity also. So that's why I can restrict it to, let's say, four threads or two threads. So as of now, I'm not restricting it restricting it and the last parameter is the, nothing but the target where you want to store the output of this uh, bad job output is nothing but the same statistics which we have seen like how many records got failed how how many got inbound how many are success any exceptions and other information one question from Sajid: mm -hmm. failed records threshold reached in the first batch step then will it mm -hmm. skip the remaining batch steps Okay, sorry, press can uh, yeah. field what, record threshold yeah. yes. so For batch. example, you said okay, maximum five records failed. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So you got five records, five got failed. So now for mm -hmm. those five records, this batch step two will get executed or not? Yeah, for sure, it will get executed, right? Uh, nothing related uh, to it. 
like if let's say i am aggregating five records and i got five so it will trigger as soon as guy uh, five records it will trigger that uh, all those processes as a part of that aggregator in that step and as soon as they are done with it they will move to the batch step two correct and arnab is asking one question can the size and concurrency parameters be assigned dynamically calculated at run time based on total number of records to be processed so can we uh, put a data weave code or something here uh, i've never tried the expression here i guess it's not allowed because uh, the run time uh, the compile time it needs to know i guess about the max concurrency i've never tried it about the expression i, I guess expression as are not allowed for uh, concurrency field But we don't have that uh, block also here chetan yeah it doesn't matter sometimes it works like we can give it this way making it as expression so um answering to the question um expression mode i guess expression mode is not allowed for uh, max concurrency okay thanks for that chetan mona is asking one question uh is it best practice to set minus 1 uh like this um, you know max point uh, oh sorry max uh, so field records field, field yeah. record. no what she was about uh, max field records so is it best practice so to set minus 1 there it totally depends on the requirement or scenario let's say uh, i am loading data uh, 100 transactions so if i put it minus 1 cause i don't want to interrupt other data synchronization just because of uh, one failure if i got a failure for a single record i can reach out to the team saying i i, I the 99 were successful uh, there is an error in this, this single record so in the most of the cases we go with uh, minus 1 when we don't have interdependencies between the records you know uh, you are getting um, me like so uh, other guys are saying we can use a property files so we can use properties instead of uh, yes. using a data weave ex expression yes for sure yeah you can pull it from uh, property file but not yeah, as but a, Arnab, you can Arnab was interested so, yeah but property file will also have that limitation you are just parameterizing it right it cannot yeah, you are hard coding it yes you are hard coding it here or there Okay. Yeah. You can go ahead, uh, Chetan. Okay. Great. So as we discussed about all of these things, max concurrency, block size. I guess we all are clear on uh, these parameters. Let's move to the batch step one. So, as you see in batch step, we just have three properties, which is just the name. as always and two other which are accept expression and accept policy is nothing but is used for refining or filtering what records needs to be entertained okay so when i say ex for accept policy i get three values all no failures or only failures so what does it mean it means uh, i when i say no failures so i'll be as a part of this batch step i will be entertaining all those records which have no failure in the previous step okay so for sure in first batch step everything is successful right because we are, it's it's the fresh start so for the it doesn't matter for uh, from my perspective it doesn't matter what you choose here uh, like for sure if you say only failures for batch step 1 everything is successful because all records are fresh and you are feeding it to the batch step 1 it uh, plays a vital role when afterward the batch step 1 as someone was asking about uh, strategies or you want to handle exceptions so let's say i'm doing some logic here and out of 150 got failed i will use one more batch step here uh, in this case where i am entertaining only failures and i am this aggregating all those and putting in the file and i can use this file to send it to some other system by mail or anything so they again depends on uh, use case how you want to handle it i can use a database uh, connector here also where i will log like all these got errored out so someone will someone will take care of it 
so this is how it works when it comes to the accept policy or even we can send it via email notification also correct with an file attachment or if needed correct with the record id so when i say all so irrelevant of failures or success it will entertain all if i say no failures so only successful will inbound to that batch step and when on when i select on the failures so the records which got failed in the previous step uh, will inbound will be uh, allowed to enter in this batch step okay so our next property is which is uh, as it says accept expression if you want if i want to write any data view here let's say i will write a data view which will say the payload dot id if let's say i am using some ids um, just a hypothetical scenario should be greater than zero so i will i will entertain all those records which are containing the field as id and whose values are greater than zero i will accept only those uh, records as a part of my this batch step processing uh, I can give you a scenario like let's say for this where this can be useful. This is the some hypothetical scenario, but from project point of view, let's say I'm I'm getting some records uh, of order type, but I don't know what type of order it is. So I can create multiple orders like this is a type of order one. So based upon a particular field, I'm checking like this is a sales order, then it should inbound to the batch step one. And if it is kind of some other type of order, it should inbound to batch step two. So there I can use uh, accept expression to filter out the records. So does anybody have any question uh, on these two parameters? I guess it's a no. So there is a question might arise in mind, like which of these get precedence. So when a record inbounds, which of these gets precedence? So for sure, here the policy will get precedence. First, the policy will be evaluated based upon the policy. We will filter out the data, and afterward, the expression. The reason being, uh, what I think is, there is no sense of um, triggering a data view expression because you know it is a cpu intensive process if it is all if it is not up to the policy we should not go with triggering a process which takes cpu intensive time so we should uh, first check for a policy then it should check for an expression so okay great now let's run it and see how these parameters, like how it looks like, how the parameters of, uh, wait, hold on. Uh, one question, sorry to disturb you, Chetan. One question from Cody. Uh, batch mm -hmm. step two will accept payload of batch step one or the original payload, which we get in the load and dispatch. Batch step one. Batch step one, I think you answered that. No worries. Yes. So um, when we say uh, records are processing here, so if we are inbounding whatever to it, every record will be accessible in, within the payload here. If you see what I'm doing here is uh, if I print, uh, if I just if I just print payload here, it will print record by record. So every records, uh, every record will be considered as a payload for, for that batch step. So as a part of this first scenario, what I'm doing, I'm creating a load of 100 records uh, in array, which is having an object uh, with the fields record ID and serial number record ID is eight. So we will get record underscore one and the serial number as one up to 100. So let me launch it and we'll see. So as we all know, so Okay, it's prompting me for clearing the up the data because I, I I was using this to clear up the data if any existing queues uh, resides and which is unfinished from previous job. So I was clear. Uh, so I prompted for clearing application data. So 
let's see. Well, this is launching uh, one question from yeah. one question from Kavita Chetan. If uh, it takes batch step one input, one record in batch step one is taking more time to process. What will be the input of batch step two? I think she is asking if uh, you have only one record only and first step is taking time. What will be the input to the second step? When you say one record overall, one record in yeah, overall say job. one record. So, so for I think sure, batch step in that two case, will wait for the batch step one completion, right? Correct. So in that case, everything is sequential, right? And no parallelism and is there. Really, one record is there. Cody uh, is asking one question. Categorization of orders should be in two different batch jobs, not batch steps, as you said, right? So Cody, it all depends upon your business requirement. Yes. Say, for example, right. you are reading a CSV file which contains two type of sales orders. Still, you can achieve this in one batch job because you will not be preparing two batch jobs to read the same file. So it all depends upon your business requirements. Uh, few use cases will fit where you need to prepare dedicated batch jobs, but few scenarios you can have one batch job reading the CSV file for two different activities. Yeah, totally depends on your use case. Yeah, we can go ahead. Okay. Okay, set launch. I'll just trigger it from my REST client. So I got control here and I got um, array of 100 objects, each object containing record ID and a serial number. Okay, from one to 100. So as you as we know, um, from flow reference, I'm calling this and batch job is a asynchronous process. So a new thread will be uh, control will be given to the new thread. And as soon as it touches the batch job, uh, um, the main thread will jump to our transformer. So in transformer, I'm just uh, giving out a success message saying accept it to not to will process your data. So let's move next. Uh, is it on second or oh, I need to let forget about it. Okay, no worries. So, got... so Shrikant is asking one question. Can we aggregate all the batch data into one file? Yeah. Purely depends upon use case, right? What kind of aggregator you want to use? Yes. Uh, yeah, if uh, if you if you think in your case in your case aggregated file can be huge, we should go with streaming. Okay, uh, we'll discuss about what streaming is. So um, in aggregator, we have a field called uh, streaming. If it take uh, um, all the processors inside it, it should be uh, streaming compatible. Let's say a database or um, our file connector, which is stream streaming compatible. So we can utilize them to stream data irrelevant of waiting uh, for a particular threshold to reach. I'm not sure why it got so slow. 
all of a sudden. While you are doing this, Srikanth is asking one question. What to do in case of payload processing in CSV format to target system in multiple batches? One second. Uh, multiple batches, but target system do not need header records every time in the database, but only once. How can we handle it dynamically in batch processing? For this problem, I want to aggregate and send. I think we will discuss it in person in the end of this presentation, QA session, because this is like a longer text. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will discuss this question in the end, in the QA section, because this is a longer text. I don't want to waste everyone's time. Yeah, so even if we, if I see here, um, if he is using a database, there is no role, role of, um, like if your end system is database after aggregating, you're putting into the database, you always do a bulk insert or something. Uh, header is not a problem because CSV doesn't look with the like we don't see the headers in database, right? You can just map it with the insert component. But when we are talking about a file and you are not using streaming, then for sure it will be a problem because um, you are appending it to the file and the headers are always there. So you can use um, some logics, some variables to see if it is writing first time. If it is not, then remove the headers. And the best way is to stream. So it will take care of the header thing for you. Uh, one question from Rahul actually, is there any way to maintain the status of bad job in object store, Chetan? Maintain the state. What do you mean yeah. when you maintain say- Maintain the status of the bad job. Because he's saying if uh, you have 1 million records and bad job, oh, your uh, application got deployed. Yeah, let's, let's uh, test the demo first. Okay. Yeah, I will take it, Rahul, for sure. No worries. So I got my hundred records. I'm giving it to the first batch step. So it got to the batch step. And the ma main thread is processing my transformer and I got my control here. So if I see here, my, what we have discussed, the block size I have given is 25 and 100 because we're inbounding. So I'll we'll be getting four groups, one to 25 and so on, what we have discussed previously. So if I open the payload here, I will see the first record, okay? So, and if I do a next, I will be getting the first record of, of some other block. Okay, so here I got 76, 76 so is, this is, this is the group. And if I hit next once again, I will got, I got 51 and I will be getting one in the next. So, and so on. In the similar way, it will process one by one. So when we say concurrency, concurrency is not about, uh, records are, uh, processing parallelly. This means blocks are processing parallelly. So if I have given concurrency of four, so it will pick up four threads and each thread we will be assigned to the each block here, not to the each record. So records will uh, for like as a, uh, let's say I got thread one for this. So thread one will be responsible for processing all these, okay in a sequential manner. So records will be, uh, will run in sequential man manner. Uh, 
in inside the uh, blocks but the blocks the batches the groups will uh, the blocks uh, will run in concurrent or a parallel way okay if i have given uh, max concurrency of 2 max then it will be picking any of these blocks like only two of them and it will process them first and pick up the next blocks so parallel process uh, here the max concurrency, max, max concurrency is not about the records will process in parallel or uh, for sure the records will uh, process in parallel but of the dip, but of different blocks not of the same block so blocks will be running parallelly not the records of the same block so similarly it it will go on and we'll see at the end what we will have so as part of payload i got some statistics here uh, telling me what's the bad, uh, bad job instance id uh, how many time how much time it took uh, what are the field records loaded records processed records and i we were talking about the batch step results so you can also check the stepwise results here so for batch step one uh, it will say field record zero received record zero successful this will be the successful records so at the step level i can also dig it up a little here as a part of this statistics and if you want to see how it looks like the Use. you can see my directory right okay yeah here it is so i um, i've gone to the my installation directory in plugins if you go i will pick up my runtime here's my runtime and in runtime if you go to mule and dot mule i will see my application here okay so here's my application so here it will create all the queues either it can be uh, an object store or some other queues so your object store information will be there in this uh, in this directory and when i select for queue store it will uh, give me the information of the batches which got created oops i am wrong directory or what let me check once again hold on oh, okay Oh, it was successful that's why it got vanished let me trigger it one one more time okay so here you can see i got three files created uh, if you want to see uh, what's my instance id here so a batch of instance id of e8d is created so i have that instance id here e8d with bsq in prefix and if i open it up i will see something like this okay so you can see this there is a, some segregation there's some segments so one's first segment second segment third segment four segments so this is nothing but just a single record information segregated uh, by the groups so here we got four groups as part of our current parameters right so i have four segments here and each these kind of lines uh, representing one record here some binary information intended for a mule okay so let's move to our second use case uh, which is what i'm doing here in this i have two batch steps uh, in batch step one i am generating some custom error okay and in batch step two i am entertaining only failure records and i am aggregating all those records and writing into the file okay 
so when I see this ag aggregator here, uh, we have some parameter which says aggregator size. So I can give aggregator size whatever I want. Whenever I want, like let's say I give an aggregator size of 10. So as soon as 10 records got aggregated, all the processors inside this aggregator will be triggered. The second thing here is the streaming, which ca we can check. Check. Uh, we can check it. So here, these two aggregator size and streaming both are mutually exclusive. You can go with either of them. Okay, so when I say streaming, it will it won't wait for a particular threshold to be reached. As soon as it gets the record, it will process it based upon what connector you are using as a part of processor. So here I'm using the right connector which is support streaming. So I, I will be doing streaming for it. There's one more parameter uh, introduced in 7.6. Uh, any, any points to do? Previously it was not there. The issue previously what uh, developers were facing as soon as some um, records gets into the aggregator, it get converted into a Java object. Okay, so let's say I'm aggregating 100 of records. So there was an overhead of again transforming it to JSON and then processing it or uh, do whatever we want. So they introduced this afterward. And if I check it uh, by default, it will just preserve the MIME type it, uh, of whatever we have in the processor section or before it okay so i will give it 10 as of now and so in batch step one what i'm doing i have written a simple data weave script okay so it will error out as soon as i get a odd number in the payload okay so if it is an even number uh, it is a success if it is odd number it will fail okay so and if it get kill gets filled it uh, at batch step two will entertain it and we will proceed accordingly based upon our parameters which we have given okay so let me change the let me redirect the flow reference to this uh. yes Niraj, go ahead do you have any questions? One question, yeah, one question from Jeno. For hundred records, how do you define aggregator size and batch block size? Batch block size, yeah, it depends. It depends on um, scenario to scenario. Uh, what MuleSoft recommend is is hundred to hundred uh, block size. Uh, we won't be processing hundred records. We are just taking a, sim a simple scenario here to parameters in. Uh, uh, deep, but we will be might be dealing with thousands of uh, or millions of records here. Okay, so for recommended uh, is like in some block uh, I've seen um, they were recommending hundred, but sometimes two hundred or three hundred uh, works best. So you have to tweak these parameters, the max concurrency and the uh, block size field, and see and compare with uh, with different. Uh, values for these two parameters and see which works best for you so for in local you can get a little idea which is working best for you and in the server level for sure it will be much more faster okay so uh, i will tell you how you can do it and how i do it in my local if i want to check with different these parameters so i can check in my local also so let's discuss about it uh, thank you for that, Chetan. Cody is asking one question. Blocks run parallelly based on max concurrency. Mm -hmm. Will the records inside the block run sequentially? Yes, the records are sequential in that particular block. Okay. So, and uh, yeah. yeah. And Akshay is asking one question. Mm -hmm. uh, how to see the source payload in the end? Because your bad job will eat the payload. It will finish up the whatever incoming payload that was given. It will give the result summary in the end on the on complete. Correct. But uh, he is asking how to see the source payload also in the uh, end. As we when we started, we uh, I used the term batch requires minimal or no user interaction. So user no need to know about it. So what we as a part of real life scenarios, what we do it, we utilize this payload. So let's say I got. Uh, these statistics as in on complete phase and I am checking for is there is any error any records got failed or all are successful if all are successful I will re I can redirect it to some other flow reference which will be uh, triggering to some other mail ID and if got a, if I got a single error like 
that in that statistics i got a field called field records is greater than zero and i will be doing some so it's not intended for us to see um, you cannot see it when you are triggered endpoint okay you can just log it or you can send uh, get it by some other medium like a mail or something okay. so we does that answer going, your question uh, we, can, we can keep on going and we'll take more yep. questions in qa okay so it got hot deployed so it will come up here so what i'm doing here aggregator i i am aggregating 10 i am writing into a file called batch.csv and i am overwriting it okay so in file if i go with overwrite if anything is if that a file exists and anything is there in that file it will overwrite the data that what override means okay and if no if none of if anybody of you haven't aware of it so uh, it will be overwriting as a part of aggregation. So I will, before, let me delete it first. Oh, it's not, okay, it's here. Okay. So I'll trigger it. I got my first failure uh, for sure it will be some uh, odd number so I got the failure for one similarly I will be getting errors for some others should I started in debug mode no worries okay we'll see how it goes so it's erroring out for all the odd numbers okay it's done so let's see uh, how our file looks like on desktop so i got a file called batch csv i'll open it up so i got my header says record id or serial number and only 10 records which is nothing but the size of my aggregator and the strategies which i have used for writing is overwrite so what it did internally it might got first 10 records then so on and this is the last batch it was processing as a part of that aggregation so it overwritten the last 10 records which errored out okay now we will see how streaming affects it so this if I is, this streaming is non-repeatable streaming in nature that's what prasad, uh, prasad is asking this streaming is non-repeatable. Uh, can you please elaborate? So he's saying in aggregator, the streaming that you're showing is repeatable in memory streaming or non-repeatable? Ah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it is related to one time. So for sure it's streaming, so we, you can read it one time only, right? So it will be non-repeatable also. I'm not sure on that cause that can be because if I let's say I use some other process after writing that should also be able to access those right all those uh, data what do you think Prasad meanwhile just check it out it's done or not correct okay so i'll try to trigger it one more what change i did here is so is a part of this use case we are entering only failure records and i enabled the streaming this time i'm not giving any ag aggregator size so previously i got only 10 okay what 
let's see in streaming how it affects i will delete stuff now it's not needed but we will delete it okay i got the control Okay, it's done. At the end, I got 50 success and it says 100 loaded fixes 50 successful and 50 failed. And let's go to our file and let's see how it looks like. It's streaming. Oh, did I miss anything? Oh, oh I forgot to. I forgot to save it. Right. That happens every time we are <laughs> testing it. Yes. But this time I ran it, so we don't need to just do next, next, next. Meanwhile, do we have any questions? Uh, no, we just have a question on that streaming only whether that is non repeatable, but we will discuss in the end. So, this is the last demo, Chetan. We will wrap up the presentation after this. Yes, so this is the last use case we will be seeing afterward. That uh, we'll see um, just for two minutes how you can check um, the performance of your batch. Awesome. It will be a two minute job. And then we'll proceed for trivia. No worries. Thank you. Yep. So meanwhile, we, we can check on how you can tweak um, these max concurrency and uh, batch block size and how you can monitor the performance if you don't have any monitoring tool. So for that, uh, you can go simply, we all have Java because we are using Mule. So you can just go to the Java JDK folder here and look for a J console. If you are uh, aware of it and bin, if you, you can check for J console. You can run it. So J console is nothing but a tool which um, in which you can select the, the process and see uh, how that pro uh, process is performing in your system. So let's say I'm picking up a mule server here and I will say connect to it. Meanwhile, this is getting connected. One question from Cody. How do you clear up the internal queue? If uh, you need to stop, do you need to stop the bad job in cloud? Oh, sorry. How do you clear up the internal queue if I need to stop the bad job in cloud? Yeah, there we have options, right? Um, in, in the queues field at the left, if you are cloud, if you are on cloud up, if you see, You can always go there and clear up the queues. And I guess at the deployment time also, you can mention it there, clear, clearing up the application data. Thanks for that, Chetan. So this is the small uh, tool which you can 
use provided by java it's always there in jdk bin you can find it j console so i'm monitoring a job my mule instance how it is performing so it uh, let's say i have given a block size of 100 and max concurrency so i can use these statistics and put put all of them side by side for with different uh, values which i came to a conclusion like i can use 100 block size 300 block size or 500 and based upon these statistics i can choose like what i want like how the heap is going with this configuration uh, how's the cpu utilization with this configuration so this is what it helps me a lot to decide on the best for my batch processing uh, configuration pro parameters can you check this for on prem is there any command for that chetan command for clearing up the uh, prasad is asking can we check this on check, check this for on prem i think he was mentioning about j console correct me if i'm wrong yeah command for yeah, checking this batch performance uh, on prem if you are running and in some in so let's say it's when you select a process so when i selected this process uh, uh, as of now only one application is running on that server but in on your on prem there will be a lot so you will never get to know uh, how much each is uh, performing so better to go with the control plane so we don't directly put everything into the on prem we just first check in uh, on our local right a single app when we go with on prem there are multiple applications running run by a single instance okay so it, there will it will be a cumulative results of different apps not a single one okay it's just a small hack which you can use on your on your local when you are uh, developing okay so i will just try development, it. So local yeah. development is does not matter whether you are going for cloud hub or you are for on prem because local studio remains same right sorry i missed that now what i'm saying is like that tool right j console was for checking the performance of your bad job on your local studio local machine only so it does yes, not matter correct. whether you are on cloud hub or you are on on prem yeah it's just for checking how a particular process is running Okay, so I picked up the mule process, which is responsible for running this particular application. So I, if I deploy two application, uh, uh, if two application are deployed simultaneously, I will, that statistics will be more of, uh, of two applications, not just a one. It's not application okay. specific, it's the whole instance specific. Okay, so it processed the records. I triggered it uh, with the streaming enabled. Let's see the file now. On desktop. Okay, so I got all of them, all the odd numbers here. How did it happen? I got only one single header. Say so what I did, I did the streaming enabled. I got the header. This is a CSV file I created. I got the header only once, and I got the all the following records which got filled. Irrelevant of a particular threshold for aggregators. As soon as it gets the first record which got filled, it will create a single tunnel. What previously it was doing, as soon as it gets for, uh, first 10 records, it will create a connection with that file. Uh, it will feed that, close the connection. And for the next 10, it will again create a connection and then close them. So, And for the streaming strategy, what it did, it created a connection which was open throughout and it's just pushing the data to it. And at the end, it closed it after the processing. So this is how streaming can also help in uh, achieving the performance because we are processing the data as soon as we are getting it. So this is all about different parameters, how these all are, are crucial and helps in achieving the best performance. So, but uh, based upon our, your scenarios, you can always play with this and get best out of it. So that's, all about today's session from my side on batch. Thank you so I much for this can. wonderful. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful session, uh, Chetan. And, uh, do we have any questions? We can discuss them right now. So let's keep like two to three minutes uh, for the questions right now.
Thanks, Ravi. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, one more thing I would like to mention here is uh, about the scopes of a variable. So we never give unnecessary data to batch job. Um, people get uh, uh, performance issues uh, saying like, hey, I'm getting performance issue. But eventually what we get to know, they are feeding unnecessary data to their batch jobs. Let's say I have created a variable which is having huge data and which is not relevant to my batch job. But even though I didn't remove it and say uh, it will give it to the batch. So what batch will do, it will replicate that to each of them, those instances. So it will utilize a lot of in memory and it will increase the space and time complexity. So uh, always get rid of the unnecessary things before giving it to the batch. So I have unmuted uh, the mic for Rahul so that he can come and he can elaborate his question because his text was lengthy. So Rahul, if you can uh, elaborate your question, please. Thank you, Neeraj. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very well. Okay. Uh, uh, Chetan, uh, my question is, uh, let's say we are feeding uh, 1 million records to the bad job. And uh, the bad job might take an hour to complete all the processing. Uh, but by that time, the main thread has already been completed. Right? And the bad, yeah. bad job would be executed uh, asynchronously. Right? Now, uh, I want to check the status of that batch job uh, because I don't want any second request to trigger the same batch uh, like in a separate instance, right? I mean, the second instance of the batch job. Until the first job is completed, I don't want any other request to get uh, processed. So, so for that reason, I want to maintain the status and see uh, allow second request only if the previous instance is completed. So uh, that's uh, yeah. what I was for the, that, uh, what I can think of is an object store. You can put a flag there. Let's say uh, your second scalar uh, when you're triggering it second time, it will check for a flag um, in the on complete phase. Uh, when you are when you triggered that bad job before triggering that, you said it uh, occupied, and at the on complete phase, you will say it free. Okay. Okay. And in the second time uh, before job you will check that flag if it is free or not if it is free then go ahead and if it is already occupied then just hold on saying uh, so okay. which is an execute so uh, the variables you cannot use because uh, it's a record uh, they have record level scope better go for some objects or, or some file system approach in that case okay all right yeah. thank you Chet. yeah thanks for yeah, I saw the message uh, from Ravi sir. Yeah, for sure, I'll reach out to him. Wants to talk or present his or her question. I can enable or I can activate your mic. Please let me know. If we have any questions left, we have tried to cover almost all the questions. But if we missed any question from anyone, I can activate your mic. Please let me know. Prashad is good. Anyone else? I think someone was asking in the beginning something about ERP or something. I'm not sure. Already got the answers. So no worries. I think we are good, Chetan. So Great. guys. Guys, just a, a small update from my side. We have an upcoming meetup on 1st of May. And the topic is wonderful. Deep dive on continu continuous integration and continuous delivery, CICD. I think the hot topic. We'll have a wonderful speaker, Nemesh Kakkar and Akshay Gupta. Yay. So I have shared the link with you guys. You can uh, you know, register. You can enroll on that particular link. And you can take advantage of that session. Another meetup that is coming on 15th May, I'm giving you the details. So anyone who is looking for AWS S3 integrations, this will be a wonderful session coming from Tirthankar Kundu and we'll have it on Saturday 15th May at 11 a.m. EDT. So I have shared the link in the chat. Uh, one question from Stephen uh, Chetan. 
how can we receive oh sorry it's, it's, it's for me actually it's not for you sorry about that yeah steven i will i will send you email with the uh, recording like with the link where you can download the recording or where you can view the recording i'll share the slides also with everyone so okay i, I can see the message from kuri yeah kuri we can reach out uh, you can reach out to me on linkedin we can look into it nowadays let me just activate his mic or enable his mic. Ravi, where is he? Yeah, Ravi, I have made you presenter. You can come and speak. Thank you very much, uh, Neeraj, for giving the two minutes. I would like to really thank Shakti uh, for You know, from the last five years, you know, but uh, this is one of the best sessions where we talked about internal how it's happening, right? Uh, really, uh, thank uh, for that. I think, uh, I think Ravi, sorry to sorry to interrupt you. Your voice is echoing too much. I'm not able to hear it properly. Shaitan, are you able to hear him? Uh, now I can. Um, previously, there are some interruptions. So right now, also I can see some background noise. I'll I'll put you on mute. Sorry about that, Ravi. So I think uh, is there any other question, Ravi? We will reach out to you. Like you can reach out to Chetan. Any other question that we have? Okay, I think we can proceed with the. Uh, Trivia then, Chetan? Sure, sure. So let me stop the recording.